Realty. Next up is the webinar Wednesday, What's New in SolidWorks 2019, Release Highlights Part 2. Okay, so my name is Ricky Wynn. I'm a Senior Applications Engineer for Hawkridge Systems. And today we'll be going over the second part of our series, um, the second half. Um, Dane had a, a great job kind of highlighting some of the, um, the highlights from 2019 on the previous Wednesday. Right, so today we'll be covering the, the second half. With that said, we've got a, quite a bit of information to cover, and I want to jump right into it. So today we're going to be covering assemblies. We'll talk a little bit about design validation, manufacturing, um, and then quite a bit on documentation. Okay. So first, for, for SolidWorks 2019, um, some of the assembly enhancements. We're going to talk about performance. We'll talk about enhancements to large design review. If you've used the D feature tool before, we're also going to take a look at the Silhouette D feature. We'll take a look at some of the explode enhancements when you're doing exploded, um, when you're doing exploded views, right? Taking apart assemblies. We'll talk about some of the options for lock toolbox part rotation and then grouping mates by status. Okay, so just in terms of performance, um, SolidWorks 2019 is using a new graphics pipeline. So which allows for high performance view manipulation. Um, and it's also gonna scale with the high-end graphics hardware. So what you're gonna see here is, this is SolidWorks 2018. And this is large assembly mode activated, right? So which means model edges and real view is disabled. So if we turn it off, you'll see the, the model begin to um, rotate much slower. Um, it's not as responsive. So all these optimizations that we make with large assembly mode makes it faster, but um, at the expense of visual appeal. In this case, now we have SolidWorks 2019. So what it does, so view manipulations like zooming, panning, and rotating, it's all done on the graphics card, which makes it much faster, right? Even with large assembly mode turned off. So you kind of see side-by-side -side comparison now. Um, we see less dropped frames when we're rotating large models, right? Less lag. Um, SolidWorks is essentially taking advantage of higher-end graphics cards now to give you a, a better user experience, um, especially when you're working with large assemblies. So what we did, we ran a few tests, right? So just some of our own um, testing. And what we found is um, the best scaling is happening with larger assemblies. So here you have 7,000 plus components. And you can see anywhere from about you know 2.4 to the highest in this case is 7.4 times. Um, the performance. So on the left hand side, right, vertically it's what it's going to be frames per second. So you can get anywhere from, you know, here in this case 2.4 uh, to 7.4. Um, we ran this on a Dell Precision 5520 with an NVIDIA Quadro M uh, 1200 GPU. Okay, so not to say that every single computer is going to um, kind of experience this, but you should see much better performance. Okay, with large assemblies. Now, large design review. Now, if you've used it before, um, it's you have the ability to open up your assemblies uh, quickly, um, work with your data. We'll be able to measure, you know, review and walkthroughs. Uh, but now there's more capabilities beyond just reviewing it. Okay, so let's pop into SolidWorks here. So um, if you've never activated large design review before, um, in our file open dialog box, right, we have the ability to under mode, we can select large design review. Okay, so this has been opened up in large design review um, for us already. Okay, so what we can do is, um, this is all, you've always been able to um, add walkthroughs, you've been able to measure, right, in large design review, it's giving you a high level overview. We can do section views, Right, take snapshots, things like that. But now they just added um, more functionality. So what they've added was the ability to, to edit the assembly. So what does it mean to edit the assembly? So when we edit this guy, what you're gonna see is um, we now have access to planes, um, reference geometry, axes, um, as well as mates. Okay, so you can see here we have access to our mates too. So in this guy, say for example, I want to take a look at this sketch. We're looking at this um, pump room layout sketch. 
right? I can show sketches, um, I can hide components still, and say for example, this pump, these two here, um, I wanna go ahead and replace them. So now I can delete components, right? It'll confirm for me that I wanna go ahead and delete them. I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. And say we wanna insert our own, right? And we're gonna go ahead and insert our components. We'll bring in our own pump assembly. I'll go ahead and uh, place it, right? I'll be able to, to kind of rotate and then obviously add in mates as we need to. So say, for example, I want to make these two concentric. It's as if you're working in the assembly itself, right? But as you can see, um, it's a pretty large assembly, but it's not um, going too slow on us. And again, um, it's just adding more and more functionality to our live design review. So say I want to make, you know, some of my, um, uh, this pump here. I want to go ahead and rotate this. We'll go ahead and make these legs here parallel with the bottom. And then last thing is just making the face here coincident and then having it line up with our pump. If you work with magnetic mates before, um, they're really useful when you're uh, designing large assemblies, um, things like facility layouts. So for example, our, um, our condenser. So we want to insert uh, that in. Okay, I'm going to go to my condenser, open that up, and this has been prepped already with our magnetic mates. So you can see those yellow, um, sorry, the pink, the pink dots is kind of going to show me, for example, hey, this is what it's going to try to attach to, right? So in this case, I want to get it close, right? Have it go in, have it rotate for us, right? Um, same ground floor, so it allows it to, to meet up properly. And then also, say for example, you were asked to change the configuration. So you now have the ability to say on the fly, instead of having an open up all fully resolved or lightweight or large assembly mode, I can go over here to simply say, well, this pump, I want to change it to my six horsepower drive instead. All right. So more options in terms of our large design review. Now, say I'm going to close that one, and then we're going to take a look next at our a Silhouette D feature. So if you've used um, Silhouette D feature, or if you've used um, D feature before, right, it's the ability to, to kind of remove some of the, the details for, for example, some of our um, assemblies. So if I go into, for example, uh, my hoist assembly, say we'll use this one here, right, I'll open it up. And we take a look at my D feature, right? You'll see on the, on the bottom left, um, well, yeah, this, this section of my, my PowerPoint, you'll see that's our assembly that we're going to um, take. And we're going to pretty much um, create the top one on the right-hand side, right? It's going to be a part um, visually similar. We're going to simplify the assembly down, um, and if we wanted to, we can always associate it to the original file, the original assembly. So it's the ability to kind of remove the um, the detail, um, improve performance, also things like intellectual property. So say I want you want to give them um, at least a, a file or a body, something to to work with, but you don't want to give them all this um, this information that you have here, right? So that they can either reverse engineer or rework. You want to just give them a model to work with. So what we can do is we can go to our D feature. So under Tools, we have our D feature. And now there's the um, Simplified Geometry, which has been there right, as an enhancement. But then now, in 2019, there's Silhouette. So it's based off the outline. So it is the, the, the silhouette of the model. Right? So if I click Next, it's going to walk me through the, the process. So how this works is we define it by groups. And those groups are pretty much going to be based off the, the simplification method. 
So say, for example, I wanted to um, copy the geometry, right? Um, this is, say, I want the, the basic outlines of these parts here. I want both sides here. You know, this one looks pretty good. And then our cable down here on the bottom. Okay. Copy geometry. I'm going to click on Add Group here. And it's going to categorize that as a group. When it does that, it processes it. And on the right hand side, it'll show you hey, um, based off what you selected, this is what we got so far. Okay. Sounds good. For our, my next group, Right. I want to go ahead and choose the inside of the cable drive. I'll go ahead and select anything, let's say, cylindrical. Um, if I want to, I can click on Select Identical Components. It selects all those rail wheels that I have. Okay, And then we'll go ahead and just grab uh, this body here from my cable. I'm going to go ahead and say Cylinder, right? because that's the kind of the, the silhouette that I'm looking for. We'll add that in. And if you missed one, it's always it's pretty easy to just go back and say, for example, there's um, additional geometry. You can always go back and click on that group and then add in something, remove something right, that you need to. So from here, we'll go ahead and let me add in a third group. In this case, we'll go ahead and set like a polygon, so things that are just general shapes. So for example, uh, the top of this cable motor, since it's its own body, I'll go ahead and select it. I'll go over here as well, select these bodies, uh, maybe these screws I'll bring in, okay, more of a polygon shape, so giving us more of a, a polygon outline, all right, add that group in, and then just one more, we'll go ahead and do our motor where it's more of a, a tight fit outline, but I'm not necessarily going to copy the geometry just because, again, um, it might be giving... Um, too much detail, more than I would necessarily need, right? So I'll go ahead and do the motor as the last one. Okay, we'll have this one process, and then we'll complete this out. Okay, got that one all set to go, and my motor here. Okay, we'll go ahead and do a tight fit outline all the way across, and just in terms of orientation, say. I want to go ahead and define that as my, my right plane. Add that group in. And then you'll see, for example, on the, the right side. I'll actually, let me adjust that real quick. There you go. Apply that again. There we go. Excellent. So from here, right, what do we do? Click Next. And you can have the option to remember we were saying link it to the original, so we're associating it to the original assembly if you wanted to, right? It maintains a link there, an external reference. Um, if not, you can just save it to a new document, press OK, and then it would be its own part. Okay, so in this case, you can see here I have a, a few in here already, so I'll call this one one. Click Save. Uh, on the right hand side, my preview is going to turn into my parts, right? So if I close it down, if I want to reopen it, right, if you take a look at our D featured part, and open that up, you'll see on uh, the left side, our feature tree, you'll see the different groups that we grouped them in, right, the individual solid bodies. So again, giving you the general shape, right, from here, obviously, you would send it to someone um, or, you know, replace the, uh, the assembly with this one, this one, it technically resolve faster, right, so just again, um, Choosing the amount of detail that you want to include with your either assemblies or your parts. Okay. So closing that one on down, we'll go ahead and take a look at our 3D markup. So we can now do freehand right sketching 3D notes um, with parts and assemblies. So think of it as you know. Say I wanted to to annotate this a little bit for uh, my mounting bracket at different views. Um, you can see here we can do SketchUp notes um, without having necessarily bring it into a drawing. So now, right, instead of creating a new document, um, one more uh, document that you have to manage, what you can do is insert these markups. Um, from these markups, you can um, choose different color color line styles. You can increase the thickness of it. And then annotate it. So in this case, you can see here how we uh, we mark it up 
um, with like a um, like a tablet, for example. Then from here, and they use like a Surface Pen, draw it out, um, and then annotate right on right on top of uh, SolidWorks. So from here, right, you would then um, allow be able to kind of communicate um, exactly what you're doing, share this information with them with these markups. Right, once they're all set up. You can then rename them, right? allows you to organize, tell exactly what it means. Then you can export it. So maybe they don't have SolidWorks or they don't have it installed on machine. Maybe licenses are taken up. You can save it out as a PDF, JPEG image, um, have it sent to them, and they can see exactly what um, information you're referring to. Okay. So other enhancements with assemblies is the ability to do explode enhancements, right? We can group mates by status, as well as lock rotation of toolbox parts. And I'll show you the option for that too, right? Just basically once we um, insert it right in there. So opening up our assembly here, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the assembly that we have that's with the exploded view. So if you've worked with exploded views before, right? You've always been able to um, take apart our assemblies, um, include exploded line sketches in there to show them where they are. So in our configuration tab, you can see here one's been done for us already, right? We can obviously animate the explode. It's just going to take apart the steps um, for how this is coming apart. We'll have our animation controller as well, right? For different speeds. So say for example, I want to play that at eight seconds instead at slower pace, see all the components coming apart. Right? Now, if I take a look at my steps, if I expand out my exploded view, you might notice on the very bottom, it's probably what you're more, more familiar with um, is a rollback bar. This is usually in parts, but now they've added the rollback bar in assemblies, right, in terms of our exploded view. So I can take my um, rollback bar and as if I was in a part, I can take this and see exactly step by step how this was done. Right? Instead of kind of pausing through the video or um, editing the feature. Uh, we can also, like features in parts, we can reorder them. So say for example, right around here, my end cap comes out, but then the pins come out and then the screws, which doesn't make much sense, right? Um, the screws are probably move out before the end cap does. So I can take that and I can reorder my steps like I would features, then it comes out kind of in the order that we're looking for. Other things too would be, for example, my washers, we're seeing them unstack, the motor comes out, then my inner washers come out, but then those don't, we don't really have a step for that, right? So if I edit my feature, right, which is that's just the exploded view, you'll actually see that it keeps the placement Right, the rollback bar, um, kind of where you were. And of course, you can use it inside here as well. And you can say, oh, you know what? Right around here, um, I'd like for my washers to actually unstack as well. Okay. So say we miss something. It's easy enough to just give it a name. We can call it unstack washers. And with auto space components on drag on, right, all you need to go ahead and just left click and drag them out. They'll automatically space themselves, now called unstack washers, and then we'll click done. Right. Easily selecting all of those, renaming features, right? and then we can take a look at the rest of the explode. Other options we have in here is the ability to, if you wanted to see, well, what would it look like if I, obviously if I can reorder things, but if I wanted to suppress it, basically removes it from memory, but it doesn't delete it. Or you find out that it turns out we don't need a certain step, obviously you can still delete. Okay, so suppressing, right, doesn't remove it from memory, press OK. And you also have access to those here too. So say for example, you want to shift select, you can then suppress, you know, multiple steps. Okay, so just giving you more functionality inside of our exploded view. And the last thing is after we animate it, say I want to animate the collapse. Right. We get our animation controller back. Inside of here, we've added more uh, file types. 
for you to use. So before we had ABI, but now we have Flash Video, MKB, right, um, MP4 as well. So just more video file formats for you to use. Awesome. So two more things, being able to group mates by status as well as locking rotation of toolbox parts. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and open up our assembly here. And right, once I open this up, what you're going to see is you're going to see quite a few errors and warnings. So our errors are going to be the ones in red, and the, the warnings are going to be here, the ones in yellow. And I know um, you guys don't have this problem, <laughs> but you have, um, but you, we hear we have warnings and errors, right? So with this, how how do you kind of solve this, or how would you um, approach this? Most likely, you can comb through your, your mates, obviously figure out what's wrong when you re, when you rebuild it, see what it's uh, kind of telling you um, what to fix, right? So another um, enhancement is being able to, um, inside my, my mates, is I can um, group the mate by status. So I do that by going to my mates folder. And then here we have group mates by status. Right? You can also do it by fasteners too, if you like. But in this case, since we're kind of troubleshooting this, say I want to go by status. What that does is it will then group them based off of salt, then those that have errors. So you don't have to kind of now go through your long feature tree and see, hey, you know, what's uh, what has an error, what doesn't, out of order. What's overdefined, what's suppressed, and then what's also inactive. So it's, e you know, a little bit easier. Um, you still have to kind of figure out what's wrong with it. But in this case, for example, my perpendicular, say I wanted to um, edit that, it says one of the entities or reference mates is no longer available or suppressed or invalid. So in this case, I have this missing plane, which used to be there, but it's no longer there. So then I can replace it with a, you know, another reference. In this case, if it senses, hey, you know what? Um, there are other mates that are also using that same missing reference. Do you also want to have this replace the other one? See, well, I'll go ahead and click yes. So solving some of the errors, um, going into our overdefined mates. In this case, we're overdefining the model, so some of these right, are not uh, being resolved. So in this case, if I find out that my coincident and say my distance mates need to be suppressed, right, so that the other two can be um, fully resolved, we'll have what we call our suppressed folder now, right? Um, any inactive mates, so for example mates that are using, or in this case, I have my suppressed ones. So any mates that are referencing suppressed components or maybe they're missing, I can go ahead and remove those if I define, if I you know, want to clean this up a little bit. And then, for example, you have your inactive mates. So for example, inactive mates that are referencing fixed components. Okay. So grouping mates by status. Solve errors, warnings, helps you kind of diagnose your assembly a little bit better. Then also, there is the lock rotation. So if I go to my um, my toolbox components, now if I go to my toolbox hardware, you can see my, my cap screws, my hex nuts, um, all of them have a minus sign. So what's the minus sign represent? It represents underdefined, right? Meaning that I can still rotate, uh, that, that one's not, that one's good. But if I go over here, I can rotate my uh, my hex nut, right? If you wanted to lock the rotation for um, just all concentric mates, if I go to my mate group again, if I right click, now there is lock concentric rotation. So if I click on that, anything that has concentric, now you'll see the before it was you know filled out, now it's filled in. If I go back to my, collapse all of this, and go in my toolbox hardware, you can see no more minus sign, right? Because, you know, a lot of those use your concentric rotation. So, obviously you can do it after the fact, 
But say you wanted to, whenever you insert your toolbox part, you want it to automatically um, lock the, the rotation for your toolbox parts. There's an option now. So going to our gear up top here, if I go into my options, let me pull this over, in my whole wizard and toolbox, we have lock rotation of new concentric made to toolbox component. So that one specifically. Okay. So if I have it checked on, when I insert my toolbox parts, then it's also going to automatically lock the rotation when we add in the concentric mate. Okay. So new option for that. Close this one down. So going back to our PowerPoint, right? Just reviewing some of the the items that we covered, where it's improved graphics performance, uh, making more capabilities in large design review, uh, being able to defeature what they knew silhouette defeature, like taking the silhouette or components, explode enhancements, being able to roll back, suppress reorder our steps. Um, locking the toolbox rotation either as an option for toolbox components, right, or just locking concentric rotation for wherever it sees concentric. And then grouping mates by status. So helping us kind of solve some of the, the errors, warnings um, that we might see with our mates. We'll take a look at the topology study. Okay, so for validation. So topology was introduced in 2018. Um, available for SIM Pro and above, right? Support for multiple load cases. Um, we can define it with stiffness and mass constraints. In 2019, they've added three more constraints, stress, factor of safety, and frequency. And then once we run the study, we can then save the results that we have um, directly to a solid mesh. So taking a look at it, um, what the topology study is, it's a way to conduct non-parametric optimization of parts. Okay, so in addition to stiffness and um, weight constraints, so in 2019 I mentioned they've added a couple more constraints. So you can see here they've added a frequency constraint. So what this allows me to do is um, make sure that the, the design is going to meet my, our vibration requirements. So we can see here, for example, um, setting a value, I can make sure it's either less, greater than, or in between a certain zone. If you look here down on the bottom, you'll see the stress and a factor of safety constraint too. So in addition to, to frequency. From there, we can then compare topology differences with the compare tool. Right? We can do it between um, before we added the frequency constraint and then obviously afterwards and kind of double check to see which one we like best. From there, I mentioned that you can export the smooth mesh to a solid mesh body, okay? Giving us a result based off the study from our topology study. So in addition to topology studies, they've also added in a more detailed flow results visualization as well as geometry-based setup for plastics, okay? So, you know, a lot of um, kind of what we covered was uh, more central, uh, more centered around um, the SOLIDWORKS, but imagine that there's so many enhancements for all the ecosystems. So we have um, SOLIDWORKS in the middle, and then you have um, PDM, the simulation, and all the other products in the portfolio. So what we did was we had um, a webinar Wednesday, um, already done and uh, in the past uh, couple weeks and each kind of Wednesday was dedicated for a specific product right so simulation flow in plastics we had um, covered the enhancers for that and is now actually available on YouTube so if you go to our YouTube website so just youtube.com slash Hawkridge systems and if you search for it um, if you go to like the search tool and look for 2019 flow or 2019 simulation um, you'll be able to find it. So I searched for this uh, kind of right before our webinar today. Okay, so that's up now and available. Okay, speaking of which, right, in the ecosystem, there's also SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. 
So we've added support for multiple machining strategies, uh, program parts, and generating, uh, generating um, NC code easily, as well as greater control over whole end conditions. So if you're doing CAM, CAMWorks, um, interested in learning more about it, just also some of the enhancements, that was also that also had its own kind of dedicated uh, webinar for it as well. So if, again, if you go to the YouTube website that we have, um, you'll be able to to go directly into it, um, search for 2019 CAM, and then um, you'll be able to find the, the webinar that we recorded for it. Okay. So lots of resources to kind of get up to speed. Okay. So turning back to, to SolidWorks, some of the drawing enhancements, um, some of many, right? So um, the, the Wember, the What's Needed PDF, every year they have it. And there's you know hundreds and hundreds of pages. So these are again just some of the the key ones that we uh, we picked out. One of them for drawings is the new removed section view type, right? So green, being able to kind of create a, a slice section really easily in a few clicks. Renaming and renumbering tags in whole tables if you do that, and then also delaying individual view updates. Then afterwards, I'm going to show you some of the kind of the um, bonus drawing tips that we found that. Sometimes people don't know about or they kind of miss that are not specific to 2019, but just in general for SolidWorks. So popping back into SolidWorks here for my drawings, I'll open up my camera assembly. And the first one that I'm going to look at is just the, the section view. So say I want to do a slice section here um, for my bottom view. Okay. So it's a new section type. It's going to be called remove section. And what happens is I simply just select, for example, the, the edges and the corresponding opposing edge for it. Um, it draws in the line for us. Okay, I can place it and then automatically create that section view. Now, I could have done that before, but it would have taken a few more clicks, um, a few more check boxes, right? Now you can jump straight into it. To create that remove section. Obviously, you can always remove the alignment. So, say I wanted to remove the alignment, you know, and then I place it somewhere else, right? We can always remove that. Adjustments for or enhancements to our, our whole table. So, if I wanted to insert a whole table here from my top view, I go to my whole table, right? Uh, my tag order, right? We can set it to be um, different uh, X, Y. I'm going to go ahead and see here, set my origin, and then my face. We have reduced tool path, which essentially calculates the shortest distance to connect all the holes, um, giving you the most efficient order from a manufacturing standpoint. Um, our radial pattern just tags radial pattern from the origin, okay, from our designated origin. And then our tag types, right? We have A, we have one, two, three, we have manual, right? So say, for example, I I will go ahead and set it to be to manual. Okay. Press OK. And I'll go ahead and place it over here. Right. If I decided, you know what, for my manual, um, say I wanted uh, to change um, the tag type to be like AA, I can just go into manual, type in AA, uh, BB, right, changes all of them. I can sort it by size. So combine the same sizes when it sees fit. Um, assign a tag prefix. So for example, for C, if I wanted to assign a tag prefix to here, all I need to do is just right click, go to assign tag prefix, and then select it. Okay, we'll do all holes of the same size. So I'll do both of these here. Okay, so a couple enhancements to, to hole tables. And one of the last ones is um, delaying an individual view update. So normally, right, if I were to make a change to my model, then it's going to automatically change the drawing too because it's referencing to it, right? So backwards compatible, you know, both ways. But say, for example, you're making uh, quite a few changes and you don't want your drawings to always update or you want to be able to control that. So say there are certain views that you want. I'm going to go ahead and select these ones here. There is now a exclude from automatic update. So if I click on this and then press OK, say we open up the part here, and I'm going to just make a, a change. I'll make a change 
to the thickness on the back. We're going to go from 7 here to, say, about 13. Okay. We'll rebuild that. We'll feed the change. And now if I window back over to my drawing, what you're going to see is, um, you'll probably see like a cross hatch. You might be seeing before when a view hasn't been updated. So it'll show you, right? It'll show you the three main views because there's also section views based off those. Those haven't obviously been updated either, right? Because the parent views haven't been updated. So you'll see, you know, what hasn't been done. Um, these other ones have been updated, right? Because I didn't exclude them. But at any point, and say, for example, you know, you're done making changes and say, hey, you know what? Now I want to go ahead and um, update that. You can either rebuild um, all of them. I just go here to, to click on rebuild for the drawing. Or you can do them individually. So for example, for this one, I'm just going to click on update view. So familiar is that, that rebuild icon, right? this guy here. You'll see the thickness will then change, right? obviously. Right? This one also changes too, because it's based off that view. And then obviously, you can do them individually. Now, the one thing that you want to keep in mind, right, let me rebuild all of them here, is they keep it, um, they keep that option turned on. So where that option was on is if I click on one here, you'll see here it says exclude from automatic update, right? So if I wanted to say, well, going forward, um, I do want to make sure that it updates so I don't have to always do that manual process. Just make sure that even though you, you know, you rebuilt it, it doesn't necessarily remove that option to say exclude from automatic update, right? So over here. So going forward, if you wanted to always maintain that um, that reference, right, and automatically update when the the part or the assembly has changed, just make sure you go ahead and uncheck that. Okay. So what else do we have? So some of the um, bonus drawing tips, and again, these aren't specific to 2019, but just some of the things that we found has been helpful and then necessarily um, people have found uh, pretty interesting, is the dimension palette, right? Auto spacing dimensions, um, dimensioning from an angle from points, and then dimensioning to a virtual sharp. So looking at the dimension palette, um, two things for it. You'll see here that I can window select right, certain components and then there's that like um, that square that pops up. That's our dimension palette. Okay. So here you you'll see that we're applying a multiple tolerances. So if I window select that icon there, right, is the dimension palette. So pulling that up, um, we can do a couple things here. We're applying um, a tolerance to multiple dimensions. That's why we window select them. You can do just for one if you want it. What else you can use the dimension palette for is um, arranging dimensions. So you'll see here, they're pretty messy, right? But when I right click and, or just select them and go to my dimension palette, there's an auto arrange dimensions, for example. So I window select, click on that icon that pops up here, there's auto arrange, and then you kind of see them space them. They're not locked down, so you can then move them afterwards, um, space them out even further if you like. So sometimes people kind of wonder what that, that icon, that dimension palette pops up and what that do. And those are just some of the options. Other things too is dimensioning an angle from points. So now if you, for example, had this line and you're trying to do an angle dimension, right? Um, instead of drawing a construction line from necessarily from that bottom point, I'm drawing a horizontal construction line and then dimensioning it from there. Um, you can save a few clicks or save that construction line by just simply selecting the line. So you'll see I go to Smart Dimension, click on the line, and if I click on the point on the bottom, I get this reference, I like kind of X, Y, Z in both directions. From there, I can choose the horizontal reference, right, for our edge, and then it'll obviously give me um, the angle from horizontal. Okay, so just clicking the line, clicking on the point, and then choosing the Kind of essentially that that axis reference that I want to use, and that I get my dimension. Dimensioning arc angle from point. So if you've dimensioned like a partial arc in this case, right? If I want to create a dimension, an angle dimension, I don't have to draw in two construction lines and dimension between them. If I click on all three points, right, the pretty much the the extent of my arc 
both sides as well as the, the center point that also gets created. Right. I can get a angle dimension, arc angle dimension. So going to smart dimension, center point, one end of the arc, and then the other end of the arc. Virtual sharp. So say there's some edges that have been filleted, but I still want to dimension to those edges. What I can do is go to dimension, right click, find intersection. And then I just simply select the, the two lines that I want to find the intersection to. Okay. Hey, Mike. So there was a question of does the angle feature work in sketch mode? Yes, it does. So if you pretty much do this, so um, if you do the same process in sketch mode, right, it's going to work the same as well as in drawings. You got it. All right, and last thing is going to be the drawing in the 3D model view. So bringing in this view, if you have your isometrics, your trimetrics, but if there's a certain kind of orientation that you're looking for, you can dynamically manipulate the model as this if you were opening up the model and then rotating, kind of creating your own custom view. Right. We can go up top here in our heads up view toolbar, clicking on the view, then we can go and access our 3D drawing view, rotate it to a you know, specific orientation that we're looking for, and then make sure we press OK right, to capture. All right. Last main topic is going to be e-drawings. Um, if you use e-drawings before, right, it's a, the free um, being able to um, review your models. So there's more file types now that are supported. We've also added in um, configuration support, and then also saving as um, 3D HTML. Okay. So before with um, configuration data, if I go ahead and let me pop over, oh, and then also improved performance, right? So here I have eDrawings open. I um, mentioned the different file types, so I've added a couple more in here. So things like Parasolid, um, Solid Edge, um, Asus. Uh, JT, NX, so we can open up those files too. And before, um, in terms of configuration data, this is actually a SolidWorks file. Before, you'd have to save it out as like um, an EASM or e, um, e part, right? So in a specifically e drawings file. Then you can access the configuration data, but then now you can open up the, the assembly directly and then um, access it. Okay. Then obviously, you still have the, the all the functionality um, that we had before. And then now there's a um, a new function in eDrawings 2019 Pro where you can save this and then access like an, an HTML, like a web HTML. So it kind of allows you for easier collaboration. So I have it open up here, for example. Right. I'll open up fast, easy on the bottom. Again, we still have the, the configuration information for us to work through. Right. Components we can look at, uh, configurations we have, um, doing some exploded views in here and then section view. So allows you for easier collaboration instead of necessarily looking at um, e-drawings or you know making sure it's installed. You can go ahead and um, output this to an HTML and then have them uh, take a look at it. OK. Also, with e-drawings, um, a couple things, actually. So e-drawings viewer, right, which is um, the Windows version, um, now includes enable markup, measure, password protection, moving components and exploded views, viewing configurations, um, playing SolidWorks animation. So pretty much everything that was in eDrawings 2018 Pro is now available in the free viewer. Okay, and so that means that going forward, everything in um, 2019 Pro is obviously specific to Pro. So one of the things would be the the save to um, web HTML. So that's specific to, to eDrawings Pro, but everything else that we've kind of basically seen right now is available um, in Pro in the viewer as well. Okay. So other um, products that we have that we've done um, webinars for, so if all works visualize. I've introduced the um, artificial intelligence D noiser right in 2018 SP3. So just machine, le machine learning helps you create faster renders. We can now simulate real-time physics and animation. 
using a, we can also use a vehicle driving simulator, um, adding video decals as you see on the right hand side with the, the MacBook or the computer. Um, scan real world materials and import via NVIDIA MDL. Other products that kind of fit into our technical communication suite is support is SOLIDWORKS MBD, right? And we have support for sheet metal design information now. We can add a bend tables for a flat pattern, add and edit bend notes, um, and then new MBD specific options, as well as add security to 3D PDF files, right? One of the main outputs for MBD. We can specify a password, disable printing and editing and copy. Also, SolidWorks Composer for technical um, or your technical documentation. Updated user interface, so a little bit more modern icons and improved efficiency. Then there's also additional measurement and error properties, custom import files, uh, importing PMI, information and envelopes, and then also some basic SolidWorks PDM integration. So things like checking in, checking out, uh, getting the latest revision directly from Composer. So all that falls in our technical communications. So things like Composer, Visualize, MBD, and Inspection, and part of the product portfolio. Right? Um, we have a we had a webinar on that too. So if you go again to our SolidWorks YouTube website, any of those products interest you, right? Or all the products interest you, um, or you have them and you want to kind of learn more, if you go to our YouTube website and then just search for 2019 technical communications or just technical, right? you'll be able to find those. Okay, SolidWorks PDM. So we now have PDM conditional notifications, so we can define conditional notifications for transitions. Um, there's been a redesign of Web 2 for various device and browser window sizes, and then as well as performance enhancements. So for a specific webinar on that, if you're um, utilizing SolidWorks PDM, you go to our YouTube website and then search for 2019 PDM. That webinar is also available too. So looking ahead, okay, if we look at, um, if you go to our the SolidWorks website for the updated system requirements, one of the things that we like to point out is, um, and now it looks like 16 um, gigs of RAM is recommended now, right? Just to, to kind of utilize everything, and then also. They've given us a end of life for Windows 7. So looks like it's SolidWorks 2020 SP5, right? So that's the the last version that um, SolidWorks will be supported, right, on um, the Windows 7 operating system. Okay. So if you go to the SolidWorks website for the updated system requirements, you can take a look at some of the information there. Taking a look at head, if you go to www.hawkridgesys.com slash events, right? Kind of like you're tuning in today, every Wednesday we have um, webinars at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Mountain time, and 1 p.m. Central. So you'll see here, um, we did the webinar Wednesday part two today. Um, we have next week, we have learning to create a perfect interactive assembly manual, so technical documentation. And then also, um, we're skipping right uh, the Thanksgiving weekend, uh, of Thanksgiving week, and then back on the 28th, we have work group to PDM taking advantage of better data management. So if you go to the website, you can go ahead and sign up for those. And lastly, just kind of reviewing, um, if you have any information that you want to kind of learn more, feel free to lo um, talk to your your account manager. Um, give us a call. Um, technical support questions. If you're on subscription with us, go ahead and you can contact us either at the 1-877-266-4469 from US, um, Canada as well. Right? We have a dedicated technical support staff that uh, will help you. I want to go ahead and thank you for attending and have a great rest of your week. Mm -hmm.